Welcome back. Well, thousands of people safely turned their eyes to the sun this week to watch the solar eclipse make its way over the United States. This eclipse, unlike the one in 2017, gave astronomers a chance to learn a lot more about the sun. Joining us now is NASA heliophysicist Ashley Greeley to share some of the preliminary discoveries. Chat with us a little bit about it. Uh, good morning, Ashley. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Courtney. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So first question. Tell people what a heliophysicist is, because that word probably puzzled a couple of people. Uh, give us a little bit about what you do. Sure. Helio means sun. Uh, so as a heliophysicist, I study the science um, coming from the sun all the way to the earth and everything in between and, and how that affects life here. Wow, very neat. And so uh, obviously we had a huge celestial event this week, the solar eclipse. What did you and your team do to prepare for this eclipse? I was actually part of an outreach team um, that went to work with kids in Dallas, Texas. So the preparation for that was huge. We had all sorts of projects uh, to get kids interested in the eclipse and, and learn how to watch it safely. Um, there were other science teams involved, of course, that uh, had years of lead up going into this. NASA had two main science projects. Uh, one was flying along the eclipse path in order to take pictures of the sun. And then from the other side of things, a few rockets were shot into suborbital space in order to take measurements before, during, and after the eclipse. Very cool. And so you mentioned a couple of those experiments that NASA did uh, to kind of get a 360 view uh, from the Earth all the way up into space. Uh, tell me a little bit more about those experiments that they conducted, uh, that NASA conducted. Sure. Uh, there were really two components of the total solar eclipse that are really interesting to scientists. One is studying the sun's atmosphere called the corona. Uh, it's really rare to get such a good opportunity to study the corona because the, the sun's really bright. It's, it's hard to um, take pictures directly of the sun and understand uh, what's going on in the corona. For our moon to be the perfect size and the perfect distance away from the Earth to block out the light from the, the sun, um, just the disk so we can observe the corona is such a, a unique experience. Um, and then on the other, the other hand, uh, we use eclipse opportunities in order to study the Earth's atmosphere as well, um, because you, you can't manufacture these, these small changes in light where suddenly everything goes dark, suddenly those effects on Earth's upper atmosphere change, um, which is why NASA sent the, the sounding rockets into space. Uh, sounding rockets just take, they just take measurements uh, during that, those few minutes that it gets in, sent up to space before the, the rockets come back down to Earth. Awesome, very cool. And so what are some of the things that you were hoping to find and discover and why is research like this so important? Yeah, um, so some of the things that we're, we're hoping to find is, is to really understand more about the sun's dynamics. Um, there's a lot still to learn in that sphere where, for example, the, the corona is, is much, much hotter than the atmosphere beneath that. Um, and scientists are still trying to figure out, figure out why. It's something that, uh, that, again, is really hard to study because aside from pictures, it's hard to get that close to the sun. Um, but we're hoping to use these measurements coupled with um, a, a satellite that's in orbit around the sun right now that's going to get the closest to the sun as any satellite ever has from NASA. It already has, but it's going to get even closer by the end of this year. Uh, Parker Solar Probe is, is the satellite that's taking continuous measurements of the sun right now, and that'll get within 4 million miles of the sun which I know sounds um, <laughs> like that's not actually that close, <laughs> but, but the, the sun is 93 million miles away from the earth um, and, and it gets really hot close to the sun. So to be able to get to that close is actually quite the feat. <laughs> very cool. And yeah, in the grand scheme of space, that's really not that far. So very, very cool. And Ashley, thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning. We look forward to uh, learning some of the things that you discover here in the upcoming months. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Thank you. That's fascinating. Yeah. I mean, this was really just because of the length of the path. Mm -hmm. They were able to kind of spend a little bit more time than they normally would when an eclipse crosses our side of the pond, you know. So, I mean, and we already know that the tools to, oh, you know, discover space are just way beyond their years. So I think it's going to, I'm really excited to see what they learn Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. To yeah. be in that position working for NASA at this time when we have oh, this. So exciting. that was remarkable. So we thank her for giving us some time, giving Absolutely. us a little insight. Yeah.